Praise God. I hand this time back to Colin to coordinate the questions and answers. Thank you, Pastor. So um, if anybody has a question, you can post it in the chat or you can also unmute yourself now. So we covered end time scriptures and we understand more why God gave the Philadelphia church the key of David. Praise God. Yeah, no question. So there's one. Yes. No, I didn't see any here. <laughs> okay. Another private, another direct one. Oh, no, another private one. Okay. Pastor, I think we need to stop this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Many yeah. Direct ones. Yeah. 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 If you all could avoid sending private messages, I uh, appreciate it. And to, because it's like QA. Uh, unless you just say, you know, then don't reveal my name, but here's a question, read out to everyone. Um, and that's it. Uh, so anyway, let me look through this. Okay. Uh, uh, let me read in general. Uh, the person is part of a major church branch organization. God took me out of it for some years. I recently been feeling that he needs me to go back to do some kind of work there. And to, after today's confirmation, I'm not partly concerned about me being there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> How do I protect myself from such shallow Christianity? I cannot see myself as a type of David to begin to rescue all those people. Please, how do I best navigate this? Okay. Um, number one, you really need to hear from God. And these are my principles that I always tell people. Why are you in a church? You're either there to receive, that means receive good teaching and spiritual help, or you're there to give. But the best is you can give and receive. If these points doesn't cover you, then the only reason you're there is tradition. So that you got to deal with yourself, uh, uh, your emotional ties, your traditional ties, and all that. That the Lord has to deal. But as for you, my friend, who asked that question, where you say that you sense a lot wants you to do some work, okay? You need to fast pray and ask a lot again. Is this instruction current or is this instruction completed? If the Lord answer you and says it's. Uh, uh, not completed yet, then you have to ask a lot, what am I supposed to do? Usually, it will have to do with people. It has to do with people that you have to care for, minister to, or something like that. And um, so, so the Lord will reveal where, who you should be ministering to, etc. And once you complete your work, you complete your work, and remember that sometimes God even reveal a time. And as to you being concerned about being in a shallow place, shallow Christianity is not as dangerous as uh, evil Christianity. What do you mean by evil? Evil is when they really got wrong doctrines, wrong practices, and uh, they're very, they got, when they got evil spirits behind them. You know, if it's one of those churches where 
where come to altar call and evil spirit come and, and minister people for <laughs> that kind of church. Uh, don't be there, okay? Uh, this become evil. So, you know, there are churches that are still maintained by men, but the churches completely under the enemy. And, uh, and, and it's so various in types and different degrees. And so one has to be discerning. And the main thing is make sure you are hearing God and you are reading the Bible, your devotional time is you and God are that close. And I always say to be able to hear God every day. If for one day I do not hear God, then I know, you know, uh, there's something. You know, I don't mean that God has to give me extensive uh, 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 ethereal, celestial downloads of the super, super kind. What I'm talking about is at least you can hear God's voice, God's affirmation and all those things every day uh, because my sheep hear my voice. And so that's uh, something that God wants. Okay, here's another. I didn't realize when you send direct message, nobody else can even know that you sent it. But um, uh, let me try to answer another one. But please try to avoid the personal one. Try to ask more general if you don't want it to be personal so that you still get the answers uh, and so that we don't take the time of everybody else. So because I have to give time to everyone uh, to learn together. Uh, okay, just want to ask how we know if we if our guardian is still speaking to us. Uh, okay, the more important thing is not whether guardian angels are speaking to us, it's whether the Holy Spirit and Jesus is speaking to us. Because my sheep hear my voice. As long as the Holy Spirit is still working, speaking to your life, different things teaching you, because every day the Spirit teaches you something, you're fine. Guardian angels, they will speak from time to time. Because uh, talkative angels are not the characteristic of guardian angels. They're not very talkative. And they only talk when necessary. Uh, and so these are ways that you can differentiate it. The last question, can I do to help my friend who left the church all his ministry which he functioned for me because just doesn't allow his secret to be ordained as an apostle. Uh, that person also, if you leave the church because they don't ordain you just because of that, also go has to deal with your flesh. So that person also did deal with flesh and soul. But overall, let me tell you, there are a lot of people who really have left churches. The people who used to go to church who don't go to church anymore. There are people who are churchless. And I really don't know how many of them will ever come back. Because some people, when they left the church, they also left the Bible and left God and left Jesus. And that's not good. So, but there will be those out there who are searching for church, searching for fellowship, searching for God. So those are people you pray God will lead them to you. It's me because we used to pray for at least, you know, for God to give one person to reach out every day. And uh, so, you know, you pray God will give you people to reach out to. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, we have one public question. Good morning. I have a question looking. Uh, it's, uh, it's afternoon for me. Uh, well, good morning to you. I have a question looking at the world today and political leaders. Is it possible that if a political leader like a president could should be oppressed by a certain demon, for that demon to affect the whole country? Oh, yes. Yes. Of course, Hitler was demonized. And um, there are political leaders that are uh, not necessarily possessed, but they are obsessed and demonized, that means under their influence. And the interesting thing is the Bible classified all empires as evil. That's the same, even though Daniel is in some of the empire, generally all empires are not good. I like a book, uh, which I don't have at the moment because it's in my library that's packed up in boxes. Uh, you know, H.A. Baker, he wrote, a uh, book about the Adulam children and uh, the revival that flowed, they were taken to heaven and everything. That was not the only book that H.A. Baker wrote. H.A. Baker also wrote uh, the, uh, a book about the spiritual, the spiritual world, but not the same way in the experience of heaven, but more of how, from God's point of view, the whole world is under darkness 
every society, every kingdom, every country has darkness and none are perfect. They all fall short the glory of God. These are my words. And, um, and that behind it, Satan is using every country empire, which is true from the book of Revelation all the way from Babylon, Assyria, all the way. Even though inside those empires, there are good people and good things do happen, like Cyrus and, and Daniel and all those, and there are good kings somewhere here and there. But overall, the whole kingdoms of the world are evil and bad. And don't forget, when Satan came to tempt Jesus, he said, show him all the kingdoms of the world. So they look good, but they're all under the domain. Because generally, most organizations of countries and political uh, groupings, they, they promote selfishness, they promote self, promote money, promote wealth, promote uh, natural things at the expense of spiritual things. It used to be that the kingdoms, empires, and countries promote spirituality. But unfortunately, even that is gone in, in the countries that were founded on spirituality and goodness like uh, U.S. I, in the, and all that, they threw the Bible out already sometime back in the 60s or, or 70s, I forgot. And then, um, and then some got Christian principles, but they have left Christianity long, long, long ago. So, uh, yes, the answer is demons, uh, fallen angels can affect them. But God still sent his angel to push them back here and there, put thoughts in. And so God didn't abandon the world. He's still pushing the world to align with what he wants. Okay, another question. After your third heaven in 2006, how did you uh, stir yourself to visit anytime you want? I'm asking because you said after once experience, you can get more. Yes. All I have to do, because, you, because I went over a period of seven weeks uh, every night, I just close my eyes and shoo, I'm there. It's like a stay over side effect that is there. I just close my eyes and I begin to see something that I'm there. And uh, so it's, um, uh, I could do that with open eyes also, uh, but closing our eyes shut out this world that make me too conscious of this world. So I just uh, cut all my sensation on this earth. I will sense that part. And so it's like, a, it's like a side effect that still remains. Sir, concerning the archangel that will join with you, they say, is it possible for there to be transfer anointing from you to us? Of course. Yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. In the timing of God. Yeah. Okay, I think the two questions pop up at once. Um, hello, Pastor. In modern churches, the establishment is such that when a prophet is not known and does not have a spiritual father, the spiritual father is not known, the prophet, minister, or servant of the Lord is not listened to or considered. Was it like that with the prophets in the Bible? Hmm. By the Bible, let's refer to Old Testament first. In the Old Testament, it's not like that because I think most of them do listen to anyone prophetic. They have an openness to it with Jewish people. But the sad thing is they also open the false prophets. So they're so open that they listen even to false prophets without differentiating them. So the opposite side is more like, I think, the an age of... Um, skepticism about spiritual things. So people are not open to spiritual things at all. And uh, so we are on the opposite end. And so thinking about New Testament, um, Agabus and the prophet travel together and they also do have an openness to the prophetic realm. Even Paul was exhorting them to do so. So I will assume that the prophets are among them. And in Paul's second mission journey, some of the leaders that were sent to Paul were prophets. Say Silas being a prophet, they mentioned the book of Acts. So they traveled with Paul and they, they were recognized. But here's the thing. 
Being recognized or not recognized is not the issue. Being faithful to deliver what God asks you to do is more important. Uh, so that sometimes like Elijah, uh, Isaiah, he says you will prophesy, but people won't listen to you. So that's a rejection. But God, God just said this will happen and he's not to be bothered by it. And uh, sometimes people recognize you and sometimes people might recognize you after a period of rejection. And uh, that's it, all right. So the rejection or acceptance is not as important as obedience to the law. Uh, next question here. Uh, hi, Pastor. How do we also deal with situations whereby due to personal misunderstanding or disagreement, certain words are exchanged, and due to that, the spiritual <coughs> leader makes a decision to not allow the individual to contribute to any further ministry or act of service in the church. Well, I would say the most important thing is have a sit down with the leader uh, or a group of leaders. And if the issue is a principle uh, or a misunderstanding, then it, I'm sure it can be clarified. So it needs to be whether it's just a misunderstanding or it's a principal issue or it's a doctrinal issue. In the book of Acts chapter 15, um, there are three types of problem in the book of Acts. It can be personal misunderstanding. It can be doctrinal issue. And um, it can be a uh, sort of practice issue or a principle issue. When Paul and Barnabas quarrel in, uh, at the end of Acts 15 in chapter 16, before their uh, third missionary journey, it was a personal misunderstanding between them and how they treat Mark. They disagree how to treat Mark, whether Mark was supposed to be there. So there I classify it to personal. Uh, in Acts 15, it was a doctrinal issue. The doctrine about the Gentiles, are they safe or not if they don't keep Jewish laws? So they deal with the doctrinal issue. And uh, in, the, in the book of Acts 6, it's a structural issue. And uh, they, they had a problem because of the widows not being cared for. And so they had to restructure the church so that uh, an area of the church that is that is uh, not ministered to God ministered. So all church problems are classified to be three types of problems. Structural issue, where the church cannot contain a new wine or a new growth that the church cannot absorb. Like the widows were getting so many and not enough people to organize or feed them. So it could be a structural issue, X6. It could be a personal issue, like between Paul and Barnabas. It could be a doctrinal issue. So the first thing is to isolate what kind of issue it is. And if it's a personal issue, then forgive and forgive and then move on is the best. And hopefully, if that is a personal, then it should be able to do so. Uh, next one. Uh, so how should the church deal with global financial crisis after the recent crash of Bitcoin? Um, uh, Remember the chart that I give in my uh, fatherly talk? Uh, do you know the reason why I put a chart at the end there? And that was to show in an indirect way what's going to happen to cryptocurrency. Uh, but while showing that, I didn't show the other part. Don't forget something about Bitcoin. It's the first cryptocurrency that was... Um, uh, that was uh, practically use, uh, and there is an end to any additional Bitcoin being created. I think they have a limit of 25 million Bitcoins. And so they are reaching the end. And you know that in history, anything that has a historical first and anything that has a limit begin to have its value. Just like today, if you have an old Apple phone or a first Apple phone or the first Apple computer, it is worth more than it was last time. So Bitcoin has its intrinsic value there. And in a way, I'm saying that 
after the upheaval in the cryptocurrency because there's a war of money coming. So different types of money will fight each other and now Bitcoin is being attacked by fiat currency and fiat currency system. Governments are not supporting it and, and trying to close that down. But you think you can really stop cryptocurrency? I don't think so. In the end, like Amazon, you know, Amazon survived the dot-com bubble burst and it became the most, uh, and the person who owned it became for a short time the richest man in the world before Elon Musk took over. So uh, don't think about months, don't think about six months, don't think about one year. You got to think five years, 10 years then you can see whether something has value or not. Because all things will go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like the stock market, uh, like a bear market. It happened to be a bear market for cryptocurrency all the time. Even their short bull runs is very short. So those which are intrinsic and have some value, they will win the fight among the cryptocurrency. The same, like in the world, there will be a fight between uh, US dollar and uh, Euro dollar and also you know let's say uh, the pound or all the other countries like Australia and all that and in the end they will be in a time of inflation that is coming haven't come yet but will be coming inflation will hit already many countries their value is gone Venezuela their money is valueless Turkey already, who dare to buy Turkey money now with inflation 30% and uh, almost uh, every other week. And, um, and so uh, inflation is happening all the time. And soon if the, the vibrations will affect uh, the stable currencies that we know. And uh, because there's so much printing of currency and people just haven't feel the effect. All they feel is just right now the higher prices of commodity and prices. And so there will be a battle of currency and a lot of them will come up bruised and blank and some completely exterminated, both in cryptocurrency and fiat currency. And that's my warning to everyone this year and it will last for the next two years. And um, so, uh, so remember that when you talk about Bitcoin, you're only talking about you know the uh, few uh, the, the past few months, and you go back further, you find that you know uh, 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 things change in months and uh, and years. So go long term. Uh, if you're doing short term, then you need a different different strategy, of course, and that's something else which uh, is important to. Uh, to, to work with God's leading and common sense wisdom and experience. God will never speak something 100% to you until you're like a robot. Everything, ask God, ask God, ask God, ask God. It will never happen. I can guarantee you, in the things of this life, it is not the nature of God. And I know God the Father and the Lord Jesus. I have been walking with God for very long. And I have experienced dealing with millions of dollars when I was in charge of churches and, and have big ministry. And I know what it is. I work with businessmen side by side. And I know greed. I know uh, uh, people who try. I work with very eager entrepreneurs I see them start a company, real estate, and grow to millions of dollars. Then I saw them quarrel. I've seen a lot in life. I have a lot of experience. And I'm telling you, it's not the character of God to dictate to us like robot. There will be a, God will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you. Maybe 50%, 50%. Why the other 50%? It's not your soul. It's the wisdom God has given to you. Because God don't want to make us like robots. He want to make us like sons and daughters in him to, to, to function in his wisdom. When, when you got up in the morning, do you ask God what shirt to wear? Do you ask God what color to wear? When you buy a car, do you ask God what model to buy? Now, some people do. But if you know God, God just 
gives you a budget. How what type of car you want? And he said, why does God don't tell me what what car to drive? Because God loves every invention. So God will be biased if he tell you to buy a Honda and not a Toyota. Don't you think God loves Honda and not Toyota? You see how you put God into that position? God cannot. So God has to tell you, okay, what type of car you want? You want a Japanese car, a continental car? Uh, what type level is your favorite? Is your faith level? Then God says, here is the overall thing that you I will provide for you. Then you choose. You know why God he want you to choose? Because he wants you to enjoy making your decision. Then you become happy. Because it's yours and you are you're jumping up and down for joy because God loves you so much. He says, you know, uh, there's, there's chocolate, there's vanilla, there's strawberry, there's raspberry, there is um, uh, uh, caramel salt, salted flavor, there's all this flavor. And God says, uh, uh, if you ask me, all these flavors are nice because they are, you know, they are nice, but I want you to enjoy what tastes you like. So don't force God into a box and make God tell you like everything and turn us into a robot. So if you are doing the business world, remember, 50-50. The Holy Spirit is your helper. That means if you don't do your part doing something, God cannot help. That means you're carrying a table, then God help. If you're doing something, God help. But if you're doing nothing, there's nothing to help. So it's a partnership with God. And that's how God loves it. And I know God long enough to know it is not his style of nature to turn us into robots. So if you're investing in everything, remember that you have to understand that there's a part of wisdom that God already given to you and experience that you must exercise. And, uh, and your free will must make a choice. And then the rest God will take care in his leading. So some of you are doing long term, so you short term because that could be your career, your profession. But learn the principles of everything. Of course, if one day, you know, a group, you want me to teach on principles in that area, you know, I'll teach on that area. But, you know, I wait till the proper time. Then uh, I, I, I like to teach that. Yeah, but, but I always, you know, like to uh, preach from a platform. That means uh, uh, once I, 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 I've uh, tested certain things, then uh, that platform I can teach on. All right, or work with someone along those platforms. Now, where are we now? Here, okay, I got this question. Next question. My questions are related to last Sunday's message. Millennium, okay, sure. Please, what becomes of people stuck in rumors to get a career in the millennium? And um, uh, what becomes of people stuck in rumors to category uh, during the millennium? It will be yeah. like isolated in a place of its, of its own. It won't be on Earth. Just like there are many other planets going on, so that place will be like a whole section of, of planet, if you call it, or section of, of, of the, the spiritual world. That, that is just there. But the people there will still need the message and all those things. And so that's where they're, they're just isolated in a section by themselves. Will men and or, uh, women with glorified bodies be reproduced in the millennium? Or is it a task reserved for those kids uh, tribution and do not have glorified body? <coughs> Men and women will be reproducing in their glorified bodies. And uh, some choose not to, and some uh, have a calling to. So they have to flow with whatever God's will is in the millennium. Uh, the sleeping hours or the average shadow is eight hours or one third of the day. If a day is like a thousand years <laughs> This time. It's like 330. Very cute question, I call it. Number three is a cute question. It won't be like that. In fact, once you enter the millennium in your glorified body, you need very little sleep. Very little sleep. And uh, the, uh, the, the sleep part is almost like, uh, like, um, like a period of meditation. That's closer to what it's like. And, uh, and, and, to read, and, and meditation and time with God. Uh, and then your activities are the normal activities. So sleep, like we know it, won't be the same. It won't be measured in that, that area. But it's a very cute and interesting question. 
Uh, next one. How does one acquire the spirit of wisdom on a skill like Exodus 31? Uh, do we pray and ask for it? I assume it's El Liar and Bezalel, but let me confirm that in Exodus 31. And yes, as Eholiah and Basileel. And uh, this skill is, um, can be asked for. Don't forget when God gave the Solomon wisdom, he became expert in botany. He spoke about uh, different plants. He became zoology, all the animals and all kinds of things God gave him. And God can give this uh, skill or artistry image to be able to carve all these things. And if it seems impossible for us, it's even occurring in a natural. Uh, not really so natural, there's some spirit involved, more of the human spirit. When a seven, S-A-V-A-N-T, uh, are people who have accidents and all that, and something happened to their brain, and their brain rewire itself, some of them discover gifts. One of them, who's not a painter at all, suddenly got the ability to paint. And the pain was so exact and precise, even better than uh, an artist who learned for years. It's just like suddenly they had a sharpness to see what, see everything and reproduce it on a piece of paper with a pen or pencil. And you read about the seven, you can search on the internet, uh, artistic sevens. Uh, and they, they just overnight can do that. So if that ability is already inherent in the human spirit, when it comes to dealing with jewelry, art, crafts, and everything like Paola and Basile, very simple for the Holy Spirit to come upon that and quicken that DNA in there. Okay, next one. Stretching the argument that God isn't biased towards any invention. <laughs> Can we also say that God isn't biased towards any sports team and we should not pray for one thing to win a competition? Yes. Don't bring God into your football team. But you can pray for your football team to be strengthened. <laughs> and uh, you like your know, certain football team, you say, oh, God, strengthen us. And go answer that. But put it this way, God is not biased to all any sports team. And uh, so it's just wrong for people to bring God into sports or even politics. You know, some people say, you know, God is with the Republicans and not with the Democrats. No, no, no. You know, there, there are good people in the Democrat, there are good people in the Republican, and there are bad people on both sides. So God is not a Republican or a Democrat if you're U.S. And uh, so, no, uh, don't, don't bring God into politics. God loves human beings. And you just see what is good and bad. And remember last time uh, during the riots in Hong Kong, I spoke, I think, and I talked about it. I said, God gave me a vision. In the vision, I saw evil spirit whispering to the rioters. And then the evil spirit then go and whisper to the people in authority. So it is the evil spirit that was causing the division. And I understand there is a, a democratic right and wrongs of, of uh, each side in the argument. I, I understand the argument on each side. And I understand the desire for freedom on, on each side and the reality. Uh, but this type of fight is not new. It has always been there throughout all political history of the world. And some people live and die. And sometimes it takes a long time, sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's never successful. And even successful, don't know whether the country can progress forward or not in that, just like South Africa. And um, so uh, the thing is that both sides cross lines. Both sides do wrong thing. Both sides also have, you know, might have good people with good intentions. Try, try, one side trying to control the situation and protect uh, people uh, and, and, and certain things and, and one side one thing to express themselves. So don't put God into politics because in, in all situations, God cannot be divided by politics 
by sports or by anything. He's just unbiased. He just loves humans. And you just want every human to find their joy and peace. Okay, that's an interesting question that leads to an interesting answer. Praise God. Sometimes we have a short session. Sometimes we get slightly longer. Today seems to be that. And uh, any other questions before I pass it to Colleen for the concluding remarks? Oh, hello, Pastor. I, I, um, I, I wanted to ask, is it, I think uh, you mentioned a little something about this some years ago, but um, is it possible that somebody um, who's alive now, who's um, a normal uh, Christian, not one of the 144,000, is it possible that they could be uh, called to do work during the uh, first half of the tribulation? Someone who is alive now, mm. but who is not a Christian yet. No, they are Christian. They're working with God. Oh, they're but they're not. Oh, um, oh, oh, could what? they be called to be part of doing work in the second, first half of the tribulation, which is with the good people? Yes. Uh, the 144,000. Outside of the 144,000, I don't know of any who is a believer that is called. Because even some of them who think they are called, they have no idea what the tribulation is like, even the first half. So the only ones I know are the 144,000. And they are those who are religious, but not born again yet. Some of them belong to that place. And they will find Christ during the first half. They are religious, but they're not really born again. Once they're born again, they enter the categ another category of, um, of Christianity. Oh, thanks. Yeah, born again one, not that I know, but religious ones, yes. Because in the first half of the tribulation, Except for the 144,000 and some survivors, everyone who acknowledge Christ gets killed. Hmm. So it should be like martyrdom. Hmm. And they don't know the world. Every industry, every commerce, Every area of bread and butter is dominated by the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So maybe they have no idea what it's like. And the mark of the beast will be on all who take part in commerce. All buying and selling makes the mark of the beast. And anyone who has the mark becomes blotted from the book of life. Anyone who don't have the mark gets executed. So any heroic ideas that they have of doing great works in the tribulation, they don't know what it's like. Yet. I admire the zeal, I admire the love. It's a little their zeal, but I think they have no idea that you can only be a part of the industry of commerce with the mark. And Christ will not allow anyone without the mark to do architecture, uh, organization, or anything to do with buying and selling in commerce and trade. So where are they going to demonstrate the skill? The only skill that is needed is preaching the word, which should come under Enoch you know, Elijah. Okay, got some questions coming. Uh, stretching the argument that God isn't biased, okay, you seem to like that. If it was any invention, can we also say that God is okay, I already answered that. Good day, Pastor. How does a Christian 
how does how can a Christian access themselves if they are not prioritizing God's calling? Example: study more hours in pursuing a degree versus studying God's word. How do we balance other things and prioritizing God's perfect will? Thank you very much. Now, if it's God's will for you to study, then I assume you have to spend seventy to ninety percent studying. Ten percent is to dedicate to God. Finish that, and uh, so uh, prioritize what you're doing. Unless you have the ability to take seventy percent of your time and still do very well, some people have, and uh, then you can spend more time to God. But I assume that in the worst case scenario, a person really need to study hard to do well and stretch themselves. Then I think if they give ninety percent of the time to pursue their studies, whatever, and ten percent to God, that's balance and uh, finish that. And then, if God calls you full time, then you can spend more time. Or if you are blessed and you are, have work which can free you more time, then enjoy that. Be blessed by that. But otherwise, one should uh, be able to whatever is directly in your hands right now. Praise God. Let me pass the time to Colin. Concluding remarks. Pastor, sometimes when we are leading a move, it uh, feels very uh, lonely. Uh, yes, it lonely is. Lonely at the top there. So, very, um, super lonely, not just lonely. Yeah. Uh, you feel like but, no one understands you and all that, yeah. But we also sometimes, uh, I mean, uh, as we encounter different uh, ministries which has been in, like, in the past, in the forefront, um, uh, I observed that the leaders always also felt very lonely and misunderstood by others when the Lord has a, a calling for them to mm. do something. So mm. uh, in seeing what the Bible has written about uh, Elijah, then uh, he had the same, uh, same feeling also. Yes. The Lord comforted him that uh, the Lord do have uh, others that are of like mind, like-minded mm. Um, so in this end time, um, will we say that we can continue to pray for um, other, other people who have been called to uh, the ministry and our leaders that uh, they would also hear the voice of the Lord and in the end join together with, with us uh, at some point? Yes, the answer is yes. I believe so. Yeah. So, and in fact, I saw in vision uh, a few people, a particular one especially, and God says, they are supposed to have opened a door to you. They did not. And that's all the rewards I have for them are now taken away. And I saw some things happening to them. So God got such a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I, a few days ago, which is like the middle of the, the fast, I... I had a dream and I saw um, that um, I saw previous in the people from my previous uh, mega church and they were all very tired. They're serving the Lord. They are trying, but they're all very, very tired. Mm -hmm. yeah. A weariness has come. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah. Because but if you look at it today, uh, we're just having conversation. Uh, there are very few ministries today they are speaking new things. A lot of them are just still speaking the old things over and over again. And there's nothing new coming out of their mouth to prepare the church for the second time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of the zeal that uh, people used to have um, may be also uh, dissipated as they, from from a young person with all the zeal for the Lord mm. uh, uh, to a, a middle-aged person where they, their finances, <laughs> finances are established and they got children, they're taking care of their family and uh, things are a bit different. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's what I kind of saw. Um, and I think we need to continue to pray that people would uh, have that, that first love again, which is what the Lord mm. wants um, mm. Amen. 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 That's a good point. Dan. Yeah. 
And a lot of these people, once God refire them with his fire of the Holy Spirit, oh, they get their zeal back. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Praise the Lord. And uh, uh, it's been good. Continue in your what we got. Continue strong in your fasting and prayer. Remember, you got one week of normal week. And uh, the next week onwards, uh, 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 it's going to be an unusual week of almost a daily uh, online prayer. And so uh, please adjust your time even to join us. We also understand those of you who are in a working world uh, with jobs that you couldn't do all the night. So don't, don't beat yourself up about it, but just can log on at another time when you can. Uh, but continue in the spirit of prayer because we are on like the last lap, the last 400 meters of a long, long marathon that we are running in this 40-day fast. Praise God. Let's give thanks. Father, we thank you for your mercy upon our lives. We thank you for your goodness. We ask that you establish us in you. Let your will always be done. Let your kingdom be established. Thank you, Father. Let your blessings of this end time stir each one here. Stir them to a close walk with you. That they be among the beautiful vessels that you have prepared for this end time. In Jesus' name, amen.